If you're struggling with your date formulas inside of Airtable, then this video is for you. We're going to be doing a deep dive on the top three date formulas for Airtable and going into detail on when you should use each one and what type of data it's going to return for you. And be sure to stay tuned until the end where we're going to go into detail on a max date function. So we're going to be able to look at multiple dates and return which one of those is the biggest or smallest. So if that's of interest to you, let's get on into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help people unlock the full potential of Airtable and Zapier so that they can build more organized and automated businesses. In this video, as I said, we're going to be going into detail on those formulas for dates. So without further ado, let's jump on into my screen here. So you'll see that we've got two main uh, date fields set up already, date one and date two. Uh, these are both just standard date fields, which you know are, is signified by the field type. And you'll notice that we have the time fields turned off. There, these formulas can get a lot more complicated with time fields, but for the purpose of this, we're just looking at dates. And so each of these is just a date picked from the calendar here, and uh, we're going to move forward from there. So the first of the four, the first of the three formulas we're looking at is going to be the date time difference. So in the date time difference, we're going to drop down in here and change this field type to a formula. And we're going to start typing date inside the formula. And you'll see that these first uh, things that pop up are different uh, fields. And then the, the ones in green here are formulas that we can choose. So we're going to go with the date time diff. And when we click again inside of here, you'll see the syntax of this formula is it takes a from variable, it takes a to variable, and it takes a units variable. So in this example here, in the syntax, we see deadline, today, and weeks. So it would calculate the difference between a deadline and today and give you the output in a number of weeks. So let's go ahead and experiment with that. We're going to go in with our first date and then comma for our second parameter, which is our second date, comma, and we're going to use days in this example. All right, so we have the first, first parameter is the first date, second parameter is the second date, third parameter is days. We click save, and what are we going to get back? Well, this is calculating the difference in days between these two dates. You'll see that this is negative because it's subtracting date one minus date two. So since date two is larger, if we wanted to make this number positive, we would have to reverse the order of the dates inside of our formula. So if we go like this, make this difference, you'll see that we now have, this is one date separating these, we have five dates separating these, and we have two days separating these. Now we can change this uh, days here to be any number of, any unit of time, right? So we could have hours, we could have weeks, so if we were to do that, for example, of course, it's not going to return any relevant data to us because these are not uh, entire weeks. If we were to change the formatting, we could do that as well, drilling in precision here. And again, because we don't actually have a full week, it's not really going to shoot anything out at us. However, we could, uh, you know, just for the sake of uh, being complete, take a look at hours. And you'll see that in this case, it's counting all of these dates as uh, as of midnight, and so this is essentially, uh, you know, one day will be 24 hours. So these will all be multiples of 24. But let's switch that back over to days. I think you get the point there. And so really we can just drill in and get the number of days uh, between two dates. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at date time add. Now date time add is a great formula to use if you're trying to calculate a deadline that happens uh, on a, a set recurring time. Let me show you what I mean. So let's suppose, you know, the first thing we need to do is of course change this to a formula again and we start typing the word date and here are our formulas. Let's go ahead and pick that date add formula. Once we click inside those parentheses, we get that syntax again. So what is this doing? This is taking a date and as the first parameter and then a count uh, as a second and then a unit as the third parameter. So let's go ahead and, and try this out. Let's go with date two as our first parameter. And let's do a count of two and a unit of weeks. See what this returns for us? All right, so you'll see that the default here is gonna be returning a date with the time. So I need to go in and change that to not include a time field here. 
just to keep things simple and just looking at dates. All right, so what is this returning for us? Well, if you recall what we typed into this formula, we said two weeks after the date. So it's essentially adding two weeks to the date of date two. So two weeks after this date. So 14 days after would be the 27th. 14 days after here would be uh, March 5th. And uh, similarly, 14 days after the last day of February would be March 14th. So there we have all of these different uh, date time ads right here. And so this is great, as I was mentioning, for calculating when something might be due. So let's suppose you have uh, uh, you know, your date field here. Let's suppose date two was uh, maybe when you assigned a task to someone and they had two weeks to complete it. This would automatically calculate the due date for them in that example. So very useful in that regard if it's a consistent amount of time that you add every time. All right, let's take a look at our last major uh, date formula here, and that's the date time format. We go ahead and do the same thing here that we've done with the others. We make it a formula field, and we're going to drop that date word in there and see all those date formulas pop up. We're going to drop in with the date time format formula, and when we click in here, we're going to see the syntax. The syntax this takes First parameter is a date time. Second parameter is the type of date that we're tossing out there. So this is, uh, in this case, they have YYY-MM, and that's all in caps, and it's within these uh, single quotes right here. So what this would return, whoops, let me bring that back up for you. What this would return is year-month. And I know this, and, and you can find this out as well, by going to Airtable support. And on this page, we're Airtable support, using Airtable, and then we're inside advanced field types and workflows. In this article here, it's going into all the different details of different types of date formats that you can return. So you can pretty much create any type of date format that you can imagine using the syntax that you find here. Let's say I really like this one. This is a, a relatively popular one where I want it to return with the name of the month, the date, and the year we see that we can get this data with the capital L, capital L. So let's jump on back here and uh, see how that looks. So let's look at date number two, and we're gonna go drop in those uh, single quotes, and we're gonna make two capital L's in the middle of it, and save that, see how this comes out. Sure enough, it's displaying date two with the full month uh, out written out. Uh, we could change this if we wanted to make it a short version of the month with lowercase l's, and that's going to return Feb. All of the different possibilities are here inside of this uh, support article, which is a great resource that Airtables are already put together for us. So you can conceivably create your date and uh, time, if you so chose, in, uh, in pretty much any way that you could intend to uh, display that data. So those are the three most popular ways that uh, we use the date time or date formulas inside of Airtable. But as I mentioned at the beginning, we do have a bonus for you on this one, and we're going to be bringing in the max date formula. So what is max date? Well, let's say you had two, form, two uh, different dates, and you wanted to calculate which of those two was maximum for some other purpose. You can do that quite easily using a max date. Now, the way that you might assume to do this isn't actually the way that it's done. So the initial thought might be to use the max function. So the max formula or max function takes a, you know, any number of uh, different field inputs and it will tell you which of those inputs is the maximum. So for example, if I said the maximum between one or of one and 10, it will return, of course, 10 in every case. Those are hard coded into the formula. So that's not a very useful function. Instead, you know, what if we looked at dynamic fields like date one and date two? So what we might expect uh, to return here would be the maximum of those dates. But because they're dates and not integers, that formula doesn't work. So the way to get a workaround on this is to actually use a nested if statement instead of the max function. So let's go ahead and uh, try out, but before we get crazy with a nested if statement, let's just do a basic if statement. And we're going to look at these two dates. And we're going to say if date one is less than date two, then we're going to return x. And if it's not, we're going to return y. 
So let's see what that looks like. In this case, it's returning all x's because our date ones are all less than our date twos. Let's throw uh, some different data sets in here to make sure that that is the case. So once I change date two to, er, I'm sorry, the second record, I change date one to be greater than date two, then my max date switches over to a y. And that's what we wanted to test to make sure that that formula is working correctly. So now that we know it's working correctly, instead of returning an x, let's instead return date one, which is, or excuse me, date two, which is the greater of the two dates. And in this case, let's return uh, date one. Click that and save. You'll see again, it's gonna return it with times of midnight. And so we can use our formatting to shut that down. And here we see the max date between these two is 213. The max date between these two is 226. And the max date between these two is 228. So really what we're doing here is just giving it a logic statement instead of using a max function. And we're saying if date one is less than date two, then bring back date two. Otherwise, bring back date one. Now this could work for a series. If you had more than two, that's when you need to start nesting these if statements. If you have three, four, or more dates to look at, you have to do this for each date is gonna get its own logical if statement. So it can get pretty complex. Max function would certainly be more helpful here, but unfortunately, this is the best way to do this inside of Airtable. So hope you enjoyed that bonus. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. All right, well, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you wanna see more content like this, do be sure to click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up while you're there. And if you'd like to swing by our website for some other free resources and maybe consider some uh, custom work that we could help you with, definitely check out the links below in the description. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.